All right, so today we're going to show you a Brown and Sharp number three. Uh, this is the largest of the of the Brown and Sharp Universal IDOD grinders. Although this one does not have ID attachment on it, um, there's a number two and there's also a number one. Uh, they all look similar. Uh, just one is a little bigger than the next. Um, this is currently wired for 440 volts, three phase. Uh, the coolant system and the hydraulic system are separate uh, units that are in the back of the machine inside the, inside the casting itself. Uh, the work head here uh, can be swiveled. This has all been cleaned up nicely. Uh, it can be made live or dead. Uh, you can put a chuck on here, a uh, face plate on there, or you can put centers in the in the center there for grinding um, with a dead center. Uh, there's a mechanism here for releasing uh, the spindle and back here a way of locking the spindle so that you only drive uh, with the outside. And when you're going to put a center in there, it has this plate which is going to mount up on here uh, so you can have your drive dog. If you're going to use a chuck, you leave that off and you would screw your chuck on here or your face plate onto here. The wheel head uh, has a lot of range in it. Uh, you got a lot of travel in and out with the, with the hand wheel. Plus you will have a coarse feed. Uh, you can switch this so that it, it feeds a lot faster when you turn the hand wheel. Um, and then it has the regular external mode for normal grinding. And then it also, um, well we won't go into that. Uh, so you have two ways of controlling this machine and there's a selector switch over here uh, for hand wheel operation, which is the hand wheel uh, right here, which I can use to start and stop this work head from coming on and the table moving. So when this switch is in this position here, you can control the machine with just the hand wheel. When you put the switch over to the, to the lever side, uh, you control it with here. So with this lever, you start the headstock and you start the table. When we want to start the infeed, this lob here actually starts the, the machine to give it an infeed. You see the hand wheel move now each time we hit the stop. Now if you only wanted to feed on one side and not both sides, you could turn that on or turn it off. You have your choice of being both sides being on or one side or the other being off. And this knob in the center here controls uh, the amount of this increment. The more you open that up, the bigger of a step you get. The more you close it, the smaller of a step you get. These knobs on top here control the dwell or a tarry. Right now I don't have any tarry on. If you want the tarry on or a dwell, you open these up until uh, you find the spot you like or the amount of time you like. Over here is the control for the speed of the table. Over here you have a reservoir to put uh, way lube in to lube the cross slide and to lube the table slide. Down here is the sight glass. You do not want to overfill this because it will leak. This has a cavity that goes way down inside the machine. When you have oil up to that red line there or that sight glass, you've got plenty of oil in there. This has all been cleaned out. Up here you have a window that when you start the machine you're going to see uh, drops of oil. That's always a good indication that you're getting lubrication oil. If you don't see any oil in that window, you need to find out why. And behind this cover is where you will find your bijure metering units. We have replaced several of them, uh, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. Over here is your infeed hand wheel. Uh, you've got a fine feed uh, planetary type dial in the center where you can make adjustments on your size. There's a dead stop over here. We're going to stop the infeed. 
and stop the table. This lever here is your stop. Right now it's in the down position. When I come around, I come around to a solid fixed stop. That's your zero. All the way to the other side is at home. Now, when you want to go completely around, you have to lift this rod up here, which lowers that dead stop, solid stop, so you can go around and around. When you reach the spot you want, you have to put this down again. Over here is your dial for your coarse adjustment feed, uh, coarse infeed, or your standard uh, external. It also has a position neutral and internal. So if you had your internal grinder on here, um, turning the hand wheel in the same direction you just saw me turn it, rather than bringing the slide forward, we'll bring the slide backward so that when you're internal grinding, you can grind to the back of the bore. Uh, it's pretty unique and unique only to these brown and sharps. I've never seen another machine with them. Um, so over here, you have your on and off. It starts the hydraulics. You have this dial here, which speeds up or slows down your workhead. And this is here for selecting your external grinding wheel to be on or it would shut it off and put the uh, ID grinding wheel on. And over here is your tail stock. So uh, that's pretty much everything. Here's your taper adjustment. On the side of this table is nice and clean and lubricated uh, so you can make uh, taper adjustments. I'm gonna shut this off for a second. The grinding wheel has a special kind of a swivel slide. Uh, right now it's a plain 90 degree angle uh, grinder, but you can rotate this, to, rotate this to 30 degrees or any, any real angle that you want. And you're going to feed in at that angle. This is a true angle head grinder uh, when placed at 30 degrees, so you can grind a shoulder and a diameter at the exact same time. So that's pretty neat to have. Uh, you've got a nice scale going around the bottom here with a couple of pointers to tell you when you're at zero. And underneath here is a couple of nuts to lock this down. Uh, what this also has is the upper part of the wheel slide can swivel. There's a nut up here on top that you have to make pretty tight when you lock this down because you don't want anything to move. And then you can move not the slide itself, you're not going to be moving the flat in the V, you're not going to actually be moving the, the infeed, but just the top, uh, the top portion of this to put this on an angle. I'm hitting something here, yeah, hitting something right here. Uh, so you can rotate this this way. Also, this whole thing is mounted on a offset or, uh, yeah, an offset eccentric plate. Uh, right now, we are as close uh, to the work as you can get. So if you're doing smaller parts, this is set up to do smaller parts. If you had a folding down ID attachment, which is going to fold down <clears throat> and would co probably come all the way out here someplace, you're going to need to be able to back this up. And there isn't that much travel on the ball screw. So this whole intermediate plate can be rotated, uh, kind of moves the whole thing back. Uh, other companies just had a regular uh, parallel type of slide, but Brown and Sharp did it this way with this uh, eccentric. Works pretty good when it's clean and lubricated like it is right now, but uh, after a while, it will be difficult to move. Um, I guess that's pretty much everything there is to say about this. It's a nice grinder. It's been cleaned up nicely. I gave you a dresser here. You can dress your wheel. Um, and that's pretty much everything. This is the Brown and Sharp number three. And uh, I hope that covers everything. Thank you.